Yes. It's no act. When my flesh gets weak, he renews my strength. Uh, I dare you to get into his presence. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you to get into his presence. I dare you to, to just forget all about you. I dare you. I dare you to just say, Lord, just do something for me right now. I, I came out this afternoon. I need you to do something for me right now. That burden that you had, you don't have to take it back with you right now. Hey, Jesus. Somebody's waiting for I studied during lunch so I could further my career. I earned it. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> praise God. We can ready to go to the throne of grace. And we're going to give God a little praise. And uh, uh, let's go before the throne. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise and we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, dear God, for how good you are to us. Lord, we don't deserve what you do for us, but you do it because you love us. And we want to say thank you. Lord, we just want to give you the highest praise, dear Lord. We just want to say hallelujah. We just want to let you know that you love us and we love you. And we want you to know, dear God, that we trust you through all things. We trust you through this pandemic. We trust you through social unrest. We trust you through sickness and illness. We trust you through everything, dear God. But we know all things were created by you. And you're the author and finisher of our faith. We know, dear God, that nothing takes you unawares. We know, dear God, that nothing catches you by surprise. Because all things do work together for good to those that love you and call according to your purpose. And we ask right now, God, that you would just encourage the body of Christ. I praise you and inspire the body of Christ to want to give you the praise and worship you deserve. We know, dear God, that you're worthy of all the praise. And we just want to give you the praise this morning. We want to thank you for how good you are to us. Thank you for saving us, God. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for delivering us, God. Thank you for healing us, God. Thank you for feeding us, God. Thank you for waking us up this morning, God. Thank you for all that you do for us, God. We don't take it for granted. Oh, yes, God. We just want to say thank you. God, you're so good to us. So good. So good to us. We love you, Lord. Thank you. We love you, Lord. Thank you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to delve into your word yes, this morning. To get Jesus. a word on high, to get some encouragement, oh, to help yes. us live this, this, uh, this Christian walk with, with uh, yes, empowerment. God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Okay. Praise God. Praise God, saints. We're going to be... Uh, getting into Psalm 34 this morning. I just felt led to talk about David a little bit. You know, 
we're going through some rough times. We're going through this pandemic and it seems like this, you know, civil unrest and the government seems like it's, uh, you know, falling apart, it seems. Uh, but the beautiful thing is through all of this, God is yet in control. And I think sometimes we forget that God is in control because we focus so much on the problem and we don't focus on God. Sometimes when we go to God, we have to go to God not asking for, but exalting him. See, he already knows what's going on here. God knew there was COVID before there was COVID. He knew there was going to be the problems we had before we had the problems. The thing we have to learn how to do is focus on God. And it was something in the worship song that was played you know, before we started. And one of the uh, commentaries said that, you know, I dare you to praise God. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to leave with you today. I dare you to praise God. Right. David knew how to praise God. One of the things about David, you know, the little timeline of David's life. David, at the age of 14, was uh, killing lions and bears to protect his father's sheep. Uh, he, he killed a giant when he was a teenager. Uh, he was uh, exalted for a period of time from killing a giant, and then the, the king that he killed a giant for tried to kill him. So David spent, you know, years on the run from King Saul. And then he hit out with the Philistines, and the Philistines were afraid of him. And then they had they tried to kill him. Uh, and the Philistine king didn't want to kill him because he wanted to use David to help him fight against Saul. And so at one point, David had to feign, act like he was insane to get out of the presence of that Philistine uh, quorum because uh, they were going to kill him. So he acted like he was crazy and finally said, okay, David's crazy, just leave him alone. So David got away. The thing about it, though, is when David was going through all these different things, he wrote Psalms. And his Psalms were his way of praising God yes. through his trials. Now, we read the Psalms. We're the beneficiary of these Psalms because they encourage us. But, but I really want you to understand that your life has a Psalm, too. There, there are things that God has delivered you from. You need to make note of it. You need to remember it. You need to recall it. And that's what David did when he wrote these Psalms. A lot of the Psalms David wrote, he wrote when he was a teenager. Some of the ones he wrote when he was on his deathbed. But the ones that he wrote when he was in severe danger always sound the same. And they all start out with him worshiping God. Psalm 34 was like that. He was, he was about to get killed by some Philistines and he escaped because he acted like he was crazy. But this is what he wrote. He said, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. Yes. Okay, I love, I love it. I must praise the Lord at all times. There's no right or wrong time to praise God. It's always the right time to praise God. He's an hour constantly speak his praises. You know what it word constantly means? All the time. Do we praise God all the time? No, we don't. Do we do we give God praise all the time? Do we speak his praises all the time? No, we don't. Some of us speak more highly about football team than we do God. You know, you look at some Eagle fans. You, you know they relate. They, they love the Eagles. Like me, I love the Eagles. But if we promoted God as much as we promote our football team, that's a shame. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand God needs our promotion daily. Yes. Speak about the Lord. Talk about the Lord. Yes. You know, sing about the Lord. You know, put them on your bumper sticker. Yeah. Put them on your backpack. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to know that Jesus is the Lord, that he's the, yes. he's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We all need to promote Jesus. Yes, yes. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. All men. Ever wonder why people aren't drawn to the Lord? We ain't lifted them up. Yes. Amen. Back to Psalm 34. Amen. It says, I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. He said, I will boast only in the Lord, not in your boss, not in your co-workers, not in your spouse, boast in the Lord. Good now, Lord. they may be responsible for something, but the Lord put them there. You have to remember that. Everything that comes to us that's good comes from the God. Verse 3, come let us tell the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. Here again, I think about football. You get a bunch of men in a room together, they know the statistics for everybody. They know that Adrian Peterson was the fifth lead in Russia of all time. They know that Walter Payton was number three and Jim Brown was number two. And yeah, but we don't, how, do we, how much do we know about God? Wow. Well, yeah. How much do we know about God? How much do we exalt his name? Yes. He says, verse four, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. God ain't answering you, maybe you ain't praying. He freed me from all my fears. The number one enemy of a Christian is fear. Uh -huh. 
the Bible says, fear not, 365 times. That's 365 times. That's the most repeated commandment in the Bible. And why is that command repeated so much? Because fear is a fear. And you got to rebuke that fear. You got to rebuke the spirit of fear. Yes. One of the reasons why we, this is, um, we get stuck, you know, in, 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 um, in our gears and don't do anything with guys. A lot of times fear. You know, God told you, go down to Broadway and hand out Bibles to some homeless people. He told you that two years ago. Why aren't you doing it now? Fear. God told you to go to prison and jail. How come you don't go? Fear. God asked you to go to the mission field two years ago. Why aren't you going? Fear. Well, don't don't try yeah. telling me oh, I didn't have the money. That's baloney. God provide the money. My yeah. wife's a missionary. We're not rich. My wife's been all over the world because God made a way for her to get to the Philippines and to South Africa and, and to uh, South America and other places. You know, we ain't rich. We ain't got it like that. But God got it like that. Yes, yeah, so, so I got you, it. You trust God. Thank you, Jesus. When you trust God, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Whatever yeah. he called you to do, He's going to give you the means to get it done. David didn't have muscles like Schwarzenegger. He wasn't seven feet tall. He was a 14-year-old skinny kid. But God used him to destroy a giant. Yes. Are there giants in your life that need to be destroyed? Well, maybe you need to do like David and start giving God the praise he deserves. Giving God some worship. Letting God know that you trust him through everything. Yes. Let him know. Let him know. Give God the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Verse 5. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shame, no shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. David said he saved him from all of his troubles, not some of them. And he said, those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. You want to know why maybe that joy is not manifesting in your life? Because you're not praising him. Give God some praise. You want to see the joy of the Lord manifested? Give God some praise. Yes. Now, let me say this to you. You're not going to always feel like praising God. It's the okay. truth. We're not. There's times when I'm in pain, I don't feel like doing nothing but staying in, in, in bed. But you know what? If you just give God some praise, yes. you take that first step out of the bed, the second step of the bed before you know what you're at work. But this is the thing we have to understand, saints of God. You're human. And because you're human, you have weaknesses. All humans have weaknesses. But the Bible says the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Stop depending on your flesh, not your feelings. Trust the Lord to help you to do the things you have to do and stop worrying about how it's going to get done. David didn't worry about how he's going to kill a lion. David knew he was going to kill a lion. He said to Saul before he even got to the battlefield. You know, who's an uncircumcised Philistine in the, 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 that comes against the armies of God? They was ready to kill him. Yeah, he, was, he, didn't, he didn't have his own hands on him. He was ready to kill him. We got to give God the praise. Yes. Got to give God the praise. Verse 7. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. You ain't got to worry about the devil. God got a legion of angels around you. You know, I, I think about some of the times in my life when I look back and I know there were angels surrounding me, when I knew angels were protecting me, you know, when I was held at gunpoint in Africa by some Somalians, it was angels that surrounded me. And it wasn't my, uh, my flag vest or anything that I, I had militarily. It was nothing but God that protected me. Amen. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. You fear God, you ain't got to fear nothing else. Verse eight, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all they need. Here again, it's time yes. to not fearing anything but God. Fear God, you ain't going to worry about nothing else. I look at God like, imagine you're a boxer and you got a corner man. That corner man is the most person, important person in the boxer's life. Yeah. Because the corner man studied the enemy. Yes. The corner man knows the enemy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The corner man knows that if you throw a right jab, when he ducks right, he's going to get hit in the head. So everything, that's why the corner man, you got to listen to your corner man. You know, boxers, why would I admit it? He would never be as great as he was without Angelo Dundee. Yeah, listen. But Angelo Dundee studied the enemy. That's what a corner man does. God knows the enemy. Yes. He knows, he knows our weaknesses, but he also knows the enemy's weaknesses. 
And God fortifies our weaknesses with the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important to walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. If you walk in the flesh, you're getting your feelings, and that's where the enemy's got you. Amen, amen. Okay, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joy of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. See, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved. Yeah. What matters is you trust in the Lord. It says you young lions get hungry. All right. Amen. So we have to understand, you can't depend on your strength. David didn't depend on his strength. Now, the funny thing about David, after David became an adult, David was a mighty warrior. David could handle himself. David, you know, he went out and killed a thousand Philistines by himself. So you gotta understand, David was he was like he was like Conan of his day, you know. Right. But David didn't depend on the strength of his muscles. He didn't depend on his sword. He didn't depend on his years fighting battles. He depended on the Lord, and that's where he got his strength. Yes. Verse eleven. Come, my children, and listen to me, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. Now, how do we learn how to fear the Lord? By listening to the Lord, by reading his word. Right. The Bible says it's faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word. Yes. Faith is the opposite of fear. Yes. You want your faith to grow? Read the word. Yes. You want your fear to lead? Read the word. Yes. Read the word. Verse 12. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Oh, this is a good one. You know, we always want to talk about how we want to be live, live long and be prosperous. Well, you want to do that? Keep your mouth shut. Stop lying to well, people. Stop gossiping. Don't yes. listen to gossip. Don't entertain gossip. Yes. Avoid evil conversation. That's how you keep your heart pure. That's why a lot of Christians get in trouble because they open up their heart and their mind to garbage. Man. Verse Amen. 14. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Notice it says work to maintain it. It takes work to maintain peace. We were talking about this in Sunday school today. You know, people have disagreements in church and disagreements in the body. You have to work to maintain peace. You, you Somebody in your body, in your fellowship gets in your nerves, you got to work it out. You got to talk to them. And they don't listen. You just keep on moving, but you don't let, do not allow uh, uh, evil speaking and gossiping. It's things of that nature distract you, but you got to work for peace. And but also to turn away from evil and do good. You can't do evil and expect good to come back. Don't work like that. Yes. Verse fifteen: The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. When you're a good, when you're a good Christian, when I'm a good Christian, not so much because of what you do, because you're obedient to God. It says he's, his ears are open <clears throat> to your cries for help. God hears us even before yes. we utter it. God knows what we're going through. He knows the pain that we're suffering through. Yes. He knows the, the anguish that we're going through. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, he does. Yeah. Verse 17, the Lord hears his people when they call him for help. He rescues those from all their trouble. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. And, and, and there are times in all of our lives as Christians where our spirits get crushed. We feel, we feel like, like we're home. We feel like we're forsaken. Yes. Don't think for one minute that you're strange because you feel like that. Paul felt like that. Moses felt like that. Abraham felt yeah. like that. Yes, even Jesus felt like that. If you read his story in the Garden of Gethsemane. But the thing that gave Jesus to his despair was he never stopped communicating with his father. And okay. when he got to the end of that prayer, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Yes. The key to deliverance, the key to walking victorious is realizing that it must be the will of God to be done and not our will. Mm -hmm. You have to put your will on the back burner. And God's will has to be done. When we do that, then we'll start seeing the more, uh, more, uh, more delivering power of God in our lives. Uh, the right, verse 19, the righteous person faces many troubles, but the Lord comes to rescue each time. Mm -hmm. The Lord protects the bones of the righteous, not one of them is broken. Now, of course, we understand that we're talking about bones not being broken. We're talking about Jesus' bones not being broken on the cross. <clears throat> but also think about Joseph. 
Uh, even after Joseph died, his bones were protected and he was taken to the promised land by the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means that God's promises are always kept. The promise that Jesus' bones wouldn't be broken, that was in Psalm 22. Was, the promise to Joseph, Joseph, Joseph knew he was going to live to see the promised land, but God promised him that you will be in the promised land, and he was. Yes. Verse yeah. 21. Calamity will surely destroy the wicked. And those who hate the righteous will be punished. Will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Oh, I love this verse. The Bible says there's no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus. We're no longer condemned. You know, if you're feeling condemned, that's not God. That's the devil. What does it mean to be condemned? Think about a person that's on death row. Think about that. I thought I had a certain movie the other day, The Green Mile, where the, the, the big muscular black guy had to go to death, death row for a crime he didn't commit. And they called it The Green Mile because he had to walk down this mile-long corridor to get to the electric chair. That's a condemned person. A person that's condemned has no hope. Yes. But praise God, we have hope. Amen. I don't care how bad it looks, we have hope. Yes. We're not condemned. We may be convicted, which is a good thing. Convicted is when the Holy Spirit tells you you're wrong. Yes. Condemnation tells you you have no hope. Condemnation comes with the devil. Yes. But I'm walking out feeling condemned. If you're feeling condemned, tell the devil he's a liar and get behind yes. you. Amen. Almost finished. Amen. So I'll go back to verse 21. Calamity will surely destroy the wicked. If you're a wicked person, expect calamity. If you're doing evil to people, expect calamity. If you do wicked things and you uh, the whole grudges and yes. do evil stuff, yes. don't expect mercy, expect calamity. You know, but when you do good, and that's why I love so many verses in the Bible just tell us how much doing good does. Like when the Bible says, when you give to the poor, you're lending to God. You know, good comes from good, but yes. evil comes from evil. You do evil to somebody, you cheat somebody out of something, you do something evil to somebody, and, and, and watch God move. It ain't gonna be a good move. All right. All right. All right. It'll be kind of moving to me. You get on your knees and say, God, forgive me. Mm. Amen. Praise God. Yes, yes. Psalm 34. Amen. And uh, we're going to stop right there. But Psalm, Psalm 34 is one of those Psalms that reminds remind you, remind you how important it is to worship God. Before yeah. you go to bed at night, go to bed worshiping God. When you wake yes. up in the morning, worship God. When you drive in the world in the morning, worship God. Worship. I'm gonna tell you something. The devil hates worship. Worship. He hates worship for a lot of reasons. One, yeah. when you when you worship God, you're, you're exalting him to his rightful place. But also the angels in heaven also rejoice. Yeah. And you know how can you imagine legions of angels activated because you started giving God some praise? Mm. Or oh, the devil's in trouble. By the time you get to work, the, the Lord's already got that situation worked out. Give God some praise. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's close out in prayer. Amen. 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 Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and we magnify your name. Thank we thank you, dear God, for how good you are to us. And we yes. pray that you would just continue to move mightily in our behalf. Yes. We ask, dear God, that you would just um, help us to realize how important praise is. Help us, dear God, in spite of our pain, in spite of our hardships, in spite of the pandemic, to give you praise. You're worthy of all the praise. Uh, we we got to be like the children of Israel, dear God. When they crossed the Red Sea, they had a party. Yeah. But they should have been partying before they got across because God already knew that they were going to get across. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, help us to have that kind of attitude to give you praise, whether we're on the one side yeah. of the sea or the other. We're going to give you praise. Yes, but yes. We know you're going to work it out. Yes. In Jesus' name, we praise you. In Jesus' pray. name, we praise Amen. you. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Praise Amen. God. God Amen. bless you, saints. See you again next week. And I pray that you have a blessed week in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.